Hi. So, now, what we're going to do today is to extend our implicit function rule to the system of simultaneous equations. Okay, so now let's consider a case like this. Look, we have a system of n simultaneous equations in the following form. So we've got some functions uh, of y from 1 to n and x from 1 to m. Don't know, this, these two numbers can be different. And now, the question we are going to ask is in which circumstances this system of simultaneous equations, which we will be calling 1, defines a set of implicit functions over here. So here we see that we have uh, uh, functions in explicit form. So here we have y as a function of x1, x2, until xm. As the same goes for y2 until yn. Okay, and look, uh, the answer to this question is given by the extended implicit function theorem. Look, again, this theorem is very long and complicated, so let's go step by step through this theorem and just analyze what's really in this theorem. Okay, so look, it starts like this. Given the equation system 1, if, so we have two conditions. Uh, the, uh, the functions f1 until fn all have continuous partial derivative with respect to all y and x variables. Look, this is something that we usually assume away at the very beginning. So basically we are saying that we are able to calculate derivatives, or at least we know the signs of derivative, and they are, we, uh, it's possible to find them, derivatives of all f's with respect to y, each y until 1, from, from y1 to yn, and from x1 to xn. Now, then, at a point y10, yn0, x10, until xn0, satisfying the system 1, the following Jacobian determinant is non-zero. So, now, we are trying to assess some point. In our considerations, this usually is going to be an equilibrium point uh, uh, or optimum point, which is a special case. And look, what we need to do now is to calculate something called Jacobian determinant. This Jacobian determinant, you see over here. Look, basically, Jacobian determinant, oh, missing one part of parenthesis. Uh, Jacobian determinant is determinant of first derivatives of some system of simultaneous equations. We denote it by J. <coughs> and look, this is something you've seen already when we discussed uh, input-output models. So this is the dif uh, differentiation uh, in, in matrix form. Uh, and look, basically what we do over here, look, just like we had with Hessian before, actually, you can think about each of these rows is associated with a different equation, from 1 to 2 to 3 to n. And then, in each column, we are differentiating uh, each equation with respect to variable y1, y2, yn. Now, look, once we've calculated all these elements, we calculate the terminals the regular way, uh, just as we did before, and we make sure that it is different than zero. Look, these are the conditions uh, uh, that always need to be met. Okay, and when those conditions are met, what happens then? Then there exists an n-dimensional neighborhood uh, x1, 0, xn0, we call it n, in which the variables y1 until yn are functions of the variables, uh, variables, 
variables x1 until xm in the form of 2. So look, first thing we get is that if those two conditions are met, this system defines these implicit functions. Okay, what else? These implicit functions, of course, satisfy the point uh, we were discussing before. So we get that y10 is a function of x10, so xm0, and so on. And then, okay, we've got that. They also satisfy first system of simultaneous equation for every multiple x1 until xm, not only at that point, but also in the neighborhood of that point, so in this n, thereby giving system 1 the status of a set of identities as far as this neighborhood is concerned. So look, in this particular neighborhood, we can think of these two as being identities, but only in this uh, neighborhood. And now, finally, moreover, an implicit function f1 uh, until functions from f1 to fn are continuous and have continuous partial derivatives with respect to all x variables. So look, basically, this is what we are looking for. We are looking for derivatives of these functions while we have this system of simultaneous equations. Okay, now, the question is, how do we find these derivatives? And look, we, are, uh, we can find those derivatives using something that we will call extens extended implicit function rule. Okay, now, so let me demonst demonstrate how do we get this rule. Okay. So, let's just say that again, we start with system one. This is the system we are given, and we've taken uh, already take care of the conditions of the implicit function rule. So, we know that uh, all these equations have continuous partial derivatives with respect to y1 uh, until xm. We also calculated the Jacobian and we know that the Jacobian is different than zero. So we know now that those equations are implying these functions. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to calculate differentials of both. OK, let's, let me start over here. OK, so differential, total differential of f1, we must, to obtain it, we must differentiate with respect to every variable. So we've got that this is partial derivative f1 with respect to y1 times dy1 plus partial derivative f1 with respect to y2 dy2 plus until partial derivative f1 dy and dy n. And look, if I would continue to uh, differentiating here, now we would have partial derivative with respect to x. But look, for the convenience, I'm going to show them all to the other hand side. But if I'm showing them all on the other hand side of the equation, it means they must come with the minus sign. So, this would be partial derivative of f1 with respect to x1, dx1, plus partial derivative of f2, oh, I'm sorry, f1 with respect to x2, dx2, and we go on like this until partial derivative of f1 with respect to xm, dxm. Okay, and then we can do the same thing with the second equation. So, you 
you see, again, I'm just differentiating the second equation with respect to y1, y2, until yn. And then, on the other hand side, I will have, with the minus sign, derivatives of f2, I'm sorry, differentials with respect to x1, x2, until xn. And look, we could do like this for a very long time until we finally reach the last equation. And in this last equation, uh, uh, we've got, again, we differentiated first with respect to all y variables. On the other hand side of the equation, we will have derivatives uh, with respect to all the uh, di differentials with respect to all the x variables. And so, of course, x. Okay. And look, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate differentials. Uh, I'm going to calculate differentials of, uh, of implied functions. So look, we will have first dy1, which is equal to d y1 d x1 d x1 plus d y1 d x2 d x2 and plus we go on like this and so d y1 d x m d x m and then the next one would be d y2 so the real partial derivative with respect to y uh, of y2 with respect to x1. Then partial derivative of y2 with respect to x2 dx2. Until the partial derivative of y2 with respect to xm dxm. And look, again, we could go on like this. Imagine that we are continuing this here. And so we would arrive at the last uh, differential, so dyn, that would be partial derivative of yn with respect to x1 dx1 plus partial derivative of yn d uh, with respect to x2 dx2 and plus partial derivative of yn dxn dxn. Now, look, we actually covered here a lot, a lot of different information. Let me check the time. Uh, okay, we've got 15 more minutes, so we definitely will be able to finish this, uh, this proof. And look, now uh, we can notice that some of these elements here are repeating. Look, I could, for example, tag, take dy1 substituted here substituted here substituted here right uh, then I could take uh, dy2 I could substitute it here substitute it here substitute it here and I could be substituting like this for a very long time until finally I arrive a d y n which I can substitute here, here, and here. Well, but there is of course a problematic issue with that. 
Well, this problematic issue is that this system would become so big that we, uh, it would be really hard to trace it. The second thing is, we would have so many sources of change that it would be really, really hard for us to entangle them. So we, we want to find derivative, partial derivative. We assume that one variable is changing when all other variables are constant. Okay, and when we're going to do this over here, let's see what happens. Let's just say that d x1 is different than 0. So only variable x1 is changing. But dx2, dx3, until dxm are all equal to 0. Now, look, so we are now considering a simpler case. A case when only some of these variables are changing. And look, what does it do? Let's start actually from the bottom this time. Look, uh, here, everything is gone. dyn is simply equal to partial derivative of yn with respect to uh, x1, uh, uh, x1 times dx1. And look, the same happens over here. Look, the, all those differentials got so much shorter. And look, actually the same thing happens over here on the right hand side. All this that you see over here disappears. And look, now this system of simultaneous equations is really, really much easier to manage. And look, because it is much easier to manage, we can now just substitute those values uh, to the equation system uh, we've got. Okay, and look, so out of this we get that derivative of f1 dy1. Now, substituting for dy1, we get dy1, dx1, dx1. Then we have df1, df1, uh, uh, y2. And for dy2, uh, we substitute this, dy. Two, dx2, dx2. And we go on like this until the last function is encountered, uh, last expression is encountered, and we substitute for dyn. So we get here dyn, dx1, dx1. And this whole thing is equal to negative f1 x1, d, x1. Okay, and now we do exactly the same thing for the second equation. Again, we simply substituted now dy1. Now we will substitute for dy2. Of dy. Oh, sorry. It always should be x1. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. It goes to. It, <laughs> it goes very automatically. Uh, okay. Of course. Remember, we only let uh, x one to change, so every uh, two components with x2 and uh, every other one are of course uh, are of course treated as uh, fix, uh, fixed. Okay, so equal to zero. Okay, and finally we arrive at the last equation. 
So here we have FL D Y one one D X one D X one plus X one plus D F L D Y and D Y and D X one D X one minus F L D X one D X one. Okay. So now we will take the new system, but it's still very, very complicated. Let's simplify it. Look, let's use the fact the dx1 is different than 0. If dx1 is different than 0, it means we can divide both sides by dx1. is not something we would like to work with. But of course, look, we can notice that some of the things are tend to appear in each equation. For example, we clearly see that this derivative, part, this partial derivative, appears on the, in the first place, in the first expression, uh, in every equation. This derivative also repeats everywhere in every equation, but now in the second position. And look, we could basically say the same thing about each derivative until the derivative uh, of yn with respect to x1. If this is the case, then why not use matrix notation? And look, this is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to treat those partial derivatives here as, uh, as our variables. And we can put this system into matrix notation. And look, it's going to look like this. to start with matrix of coefficients. Of course, now this matrix of coefficient is filled with uh, the derivatives. But let's see the logic of how this matrix of, the, 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 of uh, coefficients is built. Look, in here, you see, in each, each row is associated with the different function from f1 to fn. And look, in each column, we are differentiating with respect to different variables. y1, y2, until yn. So look, actually, if I'm going to take and calculate the determinant of this 
uh, of this matrix, I'm going to obtain a plain Jacobian. And this Jacobian is, of course, what you saw in the implicit function theorem. And look, it makes perfect sense. If this Jacobian would be equal to zero, we wouldn't be able to find the derivatives we, we are looking for. Now, where are the, these derivatives? Well, these derivatives are, of course, over here. function that we are actually have been looking for all along, now we see that we can actually obtain them by some matrix manipulation. And then finally, the vector of constant terms is also filled with the derivatives. So now, the question is, how can I find a derivative, uh, how can I find uh, the derivative of yj with respect to x, y? Well, look, we can do it simply by using the Kramer's rule. So look, we will be dividing always by Jacobian. And look, what am I doing now is that I'm going to take, in order to obtain, uh, uh, in order to obtain a, a derivative y1, x1, I would take this vector, substitute the first column, and calculate it first Jacobian. For the second one, the second Jacobian. For the nth one, nth Jacobian. So generally, all we have to do is to calculate j Jacobian and we will obtain the solution. And look, we remember that this is definitely uh, different than zero. This is the, these are the conditions of the, of the theorem, and based on that, we can be sure that the solutions here exist. Okay, in the next two videos, you're going to see application of this extended uh, implicit function theorem uh, to market model and uh, ISLM model. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you in the next video.